Welcome to another episode of Cruising with Cranston. Today we're going to talk about reefing and I'll demonstrate reefing, at least uh, on this boat. Um, it's set up more like a bigger boat would be set up. Uh, I'm able to reef from the cockpit. So I have it set up here. Uh, main halyard. Uh, main halyard. Reef 1, tack. Reef 2, clue. And then on the other side... I have reef one clue and reef two tack. Okay, so I'm able to do everything right here from the companion way. And you can see uh, the tack lines run up the boom through it. Um, here's reef one clue and reef two clue. And then if we go forward, here is reef uh, one tack, runs to a block. There's a shackle and a ring on the other side. And then up there further is reef two uh, tack. And they run down on each side to a fair lead. They hit a block and then a deck organizer and then run back to the clutch. And the same on this side, right here. To reef, let's pretend uh, we're overpowered and I'm having to flog my main to keep the boat somewhat upright. And the flogging main, something like that. There's a big bubble, or, you know, it could look completely like that flapping. Now, that's pretty much the hardest thing you could do to a sail is to let it flap like that. So what we need to do, and the boat's wanting to keep rounding up and rounding up. Um, so what the boat's telling us is we have too much sail aft, meaning we have too much main sail up, right? So to balance the helm, because you want the rudder as straight as possible, maybe two to three, de three degrees of rudder angle. Anything more than that um, is too much. So let's say that, you know, we need the deep power more. So, you know, to do that, we can do things like pull that hole all the way tight. Or we can put on Cunningham or Halyard. Okay, um, we can pump the backstay tighter, which will also flatten the sail out, and this will help us depower. Okay, there is my maximum backstay tension without the check stays on. So the sail's about as flat as you can make it. Okay, and let's say we're still overpowered. So the next option is to reef. So to do that, what we'll do is I'll open the main halyard and I'll pull in the reef tack first, which is this one. Okay. Reef tack, halyard. Um, okay, so I'll start by flogging the main. So we want it to flap like that. Okay, and then I'll open the main halyard, pull the reef in. First reef tack, and then close it. And now we'll pull the clue tack line in. Okay, and then see here how high it is right here. So you want to snug it all the way tight. And to do that, the boom needs to lift up. So make sure the vang is off. 
Okay. So now we reefed, and look how flat that. Well, no wonder it'd be slow. Okay. So remember. Remember, I put the back stay on tight. It's on on the max. Okay, so let me let this out a little bit. Let the back stay out. Say, um, you know, we're still going pretty slow here. So our polar speeds, we've lost speed 70%, 77, 75. So we're nearly a full 10% slower. Okay. And I could power up more. The clue, the ta or the reef clue has now become the outhaul. And the reef one tack up there uh, has now become the Cunningham, right? And so if I want to add more depth to the sail, I can let the Cunningham off or the reef tack, okay? Introduce the little curve to the leading edge there. Okay, and then to add more depth to the lower half of the sail, Outhaul is controlled, cr controlling that. So I will let out the reef clue. And if you watch me do this here, see how much depth that added to the sail? So now we're going to have lots of power. And I can trim it. So that's a pretty pretty powerful main there. There's lots of depth. It should be making lots of lift. Okay, so let's see the polar speeds. See them in the 80s again. Okay, so there really wasn't a big difference between full main and reef one speed-wise. I still have lots of power. I mean, obviously there's a difference. I have less sail up. Note in this demonstration that a reef is not needed as the boat is not overpowered. Performance results will be gained if the reef is needed. Remember, if you think you need a reef, you should have already done it. So I powered it up by giving it more, more camber. Okay, so you can see how long it took me to reef. It didn't take me long at all. And so if you can reef quickly like that and make adjustments based on the changing conditions, you'll sail slightly faster than flogging your main. And you'll have more power, more control of the rudder. And I would say, Reefing back and forth constantly is slow, plus it's a lot of work. You want to take your average conditions into consideration uh, and make your sail, your main sail, uh, according to what the wind conditions are. Kind of like you would pick a head sail. Let's say there's even more wind now, and I'm overpowered, and I'm tugging really hard on the tiller and the rail's in the water. So, you can change your head sail. All right, we could go to a number four from the three. Um, of course, I have this on a roller furler, so I could depower that way, but for the sake, let's just focus on the main. Um, so I could depower more by pumping in the backstay. and flattening the sail out, kind of like when I put the reef in. Uh, I could go back to those conditions on reef one. Um, and say, let's do that, and we're still overpowered. So what we'd want to do now is put a second reef in. 
And to do that, it's the same process as the first three. So I'll open the halyard. Well, first, flog the main. Okay, and then I'll open the halyard. We'll re-stack the halyard. Okay, and again, we have a flat sail because I sheeted everything in real tight. And the reason why I do that is because it's easy to let it out and it's faster to let it out than having to keep having to make these adjustments. Um, so I just, when I do it, I just put it in tight and then just ease out what you need. The reason for this is it's hard on equipment to haul in lines under load and it's effortless to ease them under load. To haul in a line, you will need to flog the sail to remake the adjustment. So you can see here, the back stays not on that tight either, but you can see here the sail's pretty flat. Okay. And say we're underpowered now after we reefed. Same thing as uh, the first reef. We can, oh wait, which one are we? I can let that haul out. Wait a minute. let that haul out okay which will introduce more depth to the bottom third all right and then I can also bring the draft backwards by letting the Cunningham or the reef 2 tack out Now we have a lot more shape to main, more power. This is flying pretty good here. Now obviously we should be going a lot slower now. So now we're going 70, 8, 80, 70. Oh, the uh, polar speed's there by the way. So it's mid 70s, low to mid 70s, mid 60s, somewhere around there. So it is a lot slower and it is blowing, let's see, what is that? Seven knots true. You know, and I'm still going three and a half, four knots here. So it isn't that much slower. I mean, obviously it's slower if we were racing, we would not be going fast right now. But for the exercise sake, let's just say it was very windy and the rail was in the water and it was getting very hard to control the boat. So my general rule of thumb is if I needed a reef to go upwind, then I'm gonna use the reef to go downwind on the main. And the reason that is, is if you wipe out, uh, you'll be stuck with a full main up when you needed to reef to go upwind anyways. Okay. And the second reason is if you can balance the rig more and get more lift forward of the center of effort or move the center of effort further forward, then, or the center of lift or the combined center of lift forward, then it'll naturally want to drag the bow downwind. And I mean, you think about it, we're, we're sacrificing 15% of our sail area. Let's say we put a first reef in, 15% of our sail area on the main, which is nothing compared to a spinnaker. A spinnaker for this boat, for example, 714 square feet versus 220 square foot main. Like, it's really, you would hardly notice a difference going down winds with a first reef main, especially when you have more control and you don't wipe out because wiping out is not fast. Okay, so 
we'll just blow them all. Oh, let me get the main halyard ready. So first, flog the sail. Okay, and the flapping will honestly help it go up the rig if you have slugs like mine, or if you have fancy harking cars. Well, good for you. Okay, so we open the reefs up. They're all loose. Oh, pro tip here. If you don't have, have self-tailing winches like mine, you can just wrap the shit out of it and let the line dangle. Just wrap it full, let the line dangle, and the weight of the line will tail it for you. Like so. Oh, hung up somewhere. All right, and we're underway again with the full main. That wasn't too slow. Okay, I'm gonna go sail around for a little bit. Go have some fun. Get back to you guys. Okay, so I had a great sail across. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back. Tack or jive, I don't know yet. Um, and I'm going to put the A1 up. Um, and then I'm going to see if I can reef underway. So I got the kite up. I'm sailing uh, 90 degrees apparent, uh, almost the way I came, a little hot. Um, we're sailing closer to the wind. Um, so I'm going to try to reef just like before. Sails kind of pinned against the rig. And the wind speed, by the way, it's uh, 8 to 10. So I'm going to do the first read. I'll pull open the main halyard, pull the back down. So you can see how flat the main is. It's not what you want to go downwind. Uh, you want a lot of camber and a lot of power. So I'll let the the reef clue out or the outhaul. Sheet it in so the sail's flying. There we go. The 
still flogging. We need more Vang. There we go. Okay. So here's the Polar. I'm in the mid 90s. Granted, I didn't need a reef right now, but this is just for demonstration purposes. So we lost a little bit, 10% the polar. It's 95, 96, 104. Oh, we're back up to where we were. The wind's also it's a little, little gusts that we're catching here and there. Here we go, back up to 100. So you can see it, we hardly lost any speed if we lost any at all. And the thing is, like, the helm is a lot more balanced. Uh, it's near center, let's see, five degrees of helm. It's a little bit, but we're, we're sailing pretty hot, too. Sure, I'm not getting run over by a ship. It's gonna rain here soon too. Behind me, oh, that. Yeah, so our polars are still at 100. Our speed's pretty good here. So what we did is we moved the center effort forward by reducing our mainsail. Um, so the helm's more balanced. See, it's near center. Two, two degrees, three. So it'd be easier for the helmsman to steer. And if we were to wipe out, then again, we're demonstrating as if I needed a reef to go up wind, which I didn't. Uh, how much easier it'd be to control the boat. And I, I mean, you're literally sacrificing just that much sail area. You know, maybe 20, 30 square feet, something like that. They still have a lot of main up, but if we were to wipe out, uh, it would be so much easier to recover from. So. There would be one disadvantage to reefing, is when I reef, or uh, when I douse my spinnaker, I usually pull it behind the main, uh, and I use the main as a wind shadow, so the spinnaker doesn't fill. And the more you reef, uh, you know, the sail gets lower and lower and smaller and smaller, and there's less of a wind shadow for the spinnaker to. Uh, fill or collapse behind, right? Okay, I'll see if I can put in my second reef. Remember, it's a third reef. Okay, so the wind speed's at 10, and here's the polar speed, 90. 
wind speed 10 to 11. I'm still at 95. I mean, look how small the sail area is. So we probably lost, yeah, 10%. Okay, I'll see if I can shake these out. Okay, so full main again. There's a lot more helm this time. We're at five degrees. Six. And we're still going. In the upper 90% of the polar hundred. It's definitely faster than the second reef. I did not need a reef in these conditions. Also, I am sailing 90 degrees apparent or around 140 degrees true. Not quite dead downwind and it's only blowing 10 knots. Also note that my clue lines are hung up, misshaping my mainsail. Going pretty fast. Seven and a half. Raymond's doing a fantastic job at driving today. Just not one mess up at all. Isn't that right, Raymond? So for anyone who's curious, I made this sail. It was supposed to look like American flag, but I didn't have the stars, so it looks like the Puerto Rican flag now. And I got my Sailmaker's insignia. It's like I got a tear there, right there. second overall and they told me because I, I reefed and they didn't and it was really windy and my boat was on its ear or the rail was in the water and they were like first roll never reef is that a mooring ball okay so I'm in a douse I just found a mooring ball I want to get it Yeah, I've got some small fishing boats here. I'd like to use a step zone to get money. So it's not ideal because uh, I'm going upwind. Stick on with the other traffic. Captain, I got no report. Considering what just happened, that went pretty smooth. Okay. Where's that mooring ball? 
Driving. I just think I found a free mooring ball. I have so many of them. I'm a mooring ball hoarder. Oh, it's a propane tank. Damn it. Oh, that is so lame. Or is it? Hmm. Oh, sorry. What is that? Oh, it's a propane tank. Well, I guess I'll get it. So I just recovered the propane tank, thought it was a mooring well, and it's mostly full. Um, and it looks like it was hooked up to uh, one of the Mr. Buddy heaters or something. Well, that's cool. It's got a bunch of free propane. And the rain is coming. It's over at Vashon now. I must get back. Hmm. Looks like it's been out there a while. Look at all these sea fleas or whatever those are. Maybe shrimp? Oh, they're little shrimp. This thing's damn corroded. Whoa! Okay, so I'm on my way back in. The rain is coming. Oh god, it's close. Probably two, three miles away. I'm gonna get rained on. But I want to be over there. Look how nice it is over there. Okay, I think that's it for this episode, uh, taking Bravo back to the mooring. Um, hope you enjoyed this, uh, the best part about sailing, you can never know it all series. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content, it will really help me out. And uh, we'll see you on the next episode.